With the MLB Draft Lottery being this past Tuesday and the Cleveland Guardians winning the first overall pick for the first time in franchise history, I figured now would be a good time to look back at the most recent number one overall draft picks. With the MLB Draft currently having 20 rounds, most fans don't really pay attention to where their team will pick in the first round, and to some extent, I can't blame them. Nolan Ryan, one of the best pitchers of all time, somehow was the 12th round draft pick back in 1965. Albert Pujols, one of the best hitters of all time, fell to the 13th round in 1999. It seems that in every draft, tons of great players are found in the later rounds. In today's video, I'm going to rank the last 20 number one overall picks because I don't think some people realize how important having the number one overall pick is in this day and age. Starting at number 20, I have Brady Aiken, the number one pick in the 2014 draft by the Houston Astros. There was literally zero competition for the 20th spot on this list. After being drafted by the Astros, Aiken and the organization agreed to a $6.5 million signing bonus. However, this offer was reduced to $5 billion after Aiken's physical revealed inflammation in the elbow of his throwing arm. Aiken ended up declining the offer and became the first number one pick to not sign since 1983. He was drafted 17th overall in the 2015 draft by the Indians and agreed to a $2.5 million deal with the team. He struggled mightily in the minor leagues and stopped playing baseball after the 2019 minor league season. Very sad story overall. At number 19, I have Mark Appel, the number one pick in the 2013 draft by the Houston Astros. In his first full minor league season in 2014, he posted a 6.91 ERA and 1.6 whip in 83 innings in single A and double A. In 2015, he posted a 4.37 ERA and 1.4 whip in 131 innings. After the 2015 minor league season, the Astros gave up on Appel and shipped him to the Phillies in exchange for Ken Giles. In 2016, he posted a 4.5 ERA and 1.6 whip in 38 innings for the Phillies AAA team before having season-ending elbow surgery. In 2017, he posted a 5.1 ERA and 1.75 whip in 84 innings in AAA again. If I'm sounding repetitive reading these stats, it's because I'm trying to make the point that he just wasn't very good. After this season, the Phillies DFA'd Appel and he stepped away from baseball in February of 2018. In March of 2021, he attempted a comeback to baseball. In 71 and a third innings for the Phillies AA and AAA teams, he posted a 6 ERA and 1.6 whip. While it looked like Appel was never going to get better, things changed in 2022. He put up a 1.61 ERA in 28 innings in AAA before finally earning his long-awaited promotion to the major league. In six games for the Phillies in 2022, Appel posted a 1.74 ERA and 1.16 whip in 10 and a third innings. After the short stint in the majors, he was placed on the injured list with elbow inflammation and hasn't pitched anywhere since then. Appel's story of coming back to baseball and proving everyone wrong by making it to the major leagues is awesome, but I just can't justify putting him anywhere higher than 19th on this list. At number 18, I have Matt Bush, the number one pick in the 2004 draft by the San Diego Padres. Bush has by far had the craziest career of anyone on this list. He was drafted as a shortstop out of high school in 2004. Over the next few years, he posted an OPS of under 600 in the minor leagues and transitioned into a pitcher in 2007. Shortly after this transition, he tore a ligament in his pitching elbow and soon underwent Tommy John surgery. In February of 2009, Bush assaulted two high school freshman lacrosse players in a high school parking lot while being intoxicated. He was then DFA'd by the Padres and traded to the Blue Jays the next day. Just one month later, he threw a baseball at a woman's head after accusing her of drawing marks on his face at a party. The Blue Jays released him the following day. In January of 2010, he signed a minor league contract with the Rays where he would spend the next two seasons playing there. In March of 2012, Bush hit a motorcyclist from behind while driving one of his teammates SUVs on a highway in Florida. After hitting the motorcyclist, he proceeded to run over the man's head with the SUV and fled the scene. He was immediately arrested and was sentenced to 51 months in prison in December of 2012. Bush was released from prison in October of 2015 and signed a minor league contract with the Rangers two months later. 12 years after being drafted, he made his major league debut for the Rangers in May of 2016. Since then, Bush has played in a total of six major league seasons for the Rangers and Brewers, in which he's posted a 3.75 ERA and 1.2 whip and 211 innings. I think it's pretty cool to see Bush turn his life around after all the mistakes he made when he was younger, but he's still undoubtedly one of the worst first overall picks in MLB history. At number 17, I have Tim Beckham, the number one pick in the 2008 draft by the Tampa Bay Rays. If you haven't heard of Beckham before, it's because he really never accomplished anything in the majors. He played seven seasons in total, but only played in 484 games, most recently in 2022 with the Twins. In his career, he has 63 home runs while posting an OPS of 724 and accumulating 3.2 B-War. During his professional career, he was suspended three times for drug abuse for a total of 130 games. He also had multiple season-ending surgeries and one that basically ended his playing career last season. He wasn't exactly the best number one overall pick by any means. At number 16, I have Mickey Moniak, the number one pick in the 2016 draft by the Philadelphia Phillies. Moniak has had a pretty interesting professional career so far. His career started off incredibly slow, as he never posted an OPS of over 750 in a single season for the first four years in the minors. Due to there being no minor league season in 2020, the Phillies decided to give him a shot in the majors, where he went 3 for 14 with 4 walks in 8 games. In 2021, he posted a 746 OPS in 100 games in AAA, and went 3 for 33 with 1 home run in 21 major league games. After struggling in another short stint with the Phillies in 2022, they shipped him to the Angels at the trade deadline for Noah Syndergaard. In 2023, with an injury to Mike Trout, 
out, the Angels gave him a chance in the major leagues and he was pretty good. In 311 at bats, he put up an 802 OPS while hitting 14 home runs and 21 doubles. This was by far the best season of Moniac's professional career, but it's taken him 7 years to finally have a productive season in the major leagues, so I just can't rank him higher anywhere than here. At number 15, I have Henry Davis, the number 1 pick in the 2021 draft by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Davis's professional career has been pretty short, so there isn't too much to talk about. From 2021 to 2023, he battled a few injuries which limited him to only playing in 122 minor league games. In the minors, he posted an OPS of 947 while hitting 25 home runs and stealing 20 bases. He got called up to the Pirates in mid-June of this year and posted an OPS of 653 and 225 major league at-bats. I'm not really sure why the Pirates moved him from catcher to the outfield in the majors, but he showed off his cannon a few times this year and I think he'll mold into a great major leaguer as soon as 2024. At number 14, I have Luke Hochaver, the number one pick in the 2006 draft by the Kansas City Royals. Hochaver never lived up to being an ace starting pitcher, which people thought he would, but he still had a good career. He made it to the big leagues in 2007 and was a member of the Royals starting rotation from 2008 to 2012. In this span, he threw 771 innings while posting an ERA of 5.39 and FIP of 4.46. In 2013, the Royals moved him to the bullpen where he had his best season yet, posting a 1.92 ERA and .83 whip in 58 appearances. Tommy John surgery took him out for 2014, but he came back in 20. 15 and was a key contributor for the team. He posted a 3.73 ERA and 4 FIP in 49 appearances in the regular season and didn't give up a single run in 9 postseason games. He was also the winning pitcher in the deciding Game 5 of the World Series, resulting in the Royals' first championship in 30 years. I know he might not have been an ace at any point in his career, but he helped bring a World Series home to Kansas City, so I think he had a solid career overall for the Royals. At number 13, I have Casey Mize, the number one pick in the 2018 draft by the Detroit Tigers. In his first full minor league season in 2019, Mize was dominant. In 21 starts and 109 innings in single A and double A, he had a 2.55 ERA and .94 whip. This great season resulted in him getting 7 starts in the 2020 COVID season for the Tigers, where he had a 7 ERA and struggled mightily. In his first full Major League season in 2021, Mize started 30 games and threw 150 innings while posting a 3.71 ERA and 1.14 whip. This was a great rookie season for Mize, and it looked like he was destined to take another step forward in 2022. Unfortunately, after 2 starts in 2022, he was placed on the injury list with a right elbow strain and underwent Tommy John surgery a few months later in June. He hasn't pitched since then, as the recovery process from Tommy John is super lengthy and the Tigers have no reason to rush him back. I still think Mize can be a quality pitcher in the big leagues, and hope he comes back shoving for the Tigers in 2024. At number 12, I have Spencer Torkelson, the number 1 pick in the 2020 draft by the Detroit Tigers. In 121 minor league games across single A, double A, and triple A in 2021, Torkelson posted an OPS of 935 while hitting 30 home runs and 29 doubles. This power earned him a call up to the Tigers Major League team in 2022, where he played in 110 games. In the majors, he had an OPS of 604 while hitting 8 home runs and 360 at bats. It wasn't the best rookie season by any means, but he bounced back in 2023. In 159 games, he posted an OPS of 758 while hitting 31 home runs and 34 doubles. I think Torkelson should be able to be a consistent 30 home run hitter in the major leagues, as his power really is incredible. I expect him to have a big 2024 season for sure. At number 11, I have Royce Lewis, the number one pick in the 2017 draft by the Minnesota Twins. Lewis's professional career so far has been incredibly derailed with injuries. In 2018, he played in 121 minor league games, posting an 803 OPS while hitting 14 home runs and stealing 28 bases. In 2019, he played in 127 minor league games, posting an OPS of 661 while hitting 12 home runs and stealing 22 bases. As a result of these struggles, he didn't justify a call-up in the 2020 COVID-shortened season. In 2021, he tore his ACL in spring training and didn't play a single game. After this, most people just wrote him off as a bust. However, he posted a 940 OPS in 34 games in AAA and 2022, and he proceeded to earn a call up to the majors. In 12 games, he posted an 867 OPS, which was pretty promising. However, he tore a ligament in his right knee and underwent season ending surgery again. He came back to the Twins in 2023, where he posted a 921 OPS and hit 15 home runs in 58 games. In October, he became the third player in MLB history to hit a home run in their first two career postseason plate appearances. I think if Lewis can be healthy in 2024, he could be an all star. The talent is obviously there, he just needs to stay healthy. At number 10, I have Paul Skeens, the number one pick in the 2023 draft by the Pittsburgh. Pirates. Here's where the list gets a little controversial. Could I have put Skeens 15th or 16th and just said it's unfair to rank him higher and left it at that? I could have. However, I think he's going to be ridiculous in the majors leagues and could pitch for the Pirates in 2024. His 2023 college season was flat out unbelievable, and with his skill set, I for sure see him having a lot of success in the major leagues. Paul went to my rival high school and I grew up facing his travel ball teams a lot. Let me tell you, the man always threw straight gas on the mound. I don't really care if it's unfair to some of the guys ranked below him on this list. I know he's going to be a great pitcher for the Pirates for a long time. At number 9, I have Jackson Hall the number one pick in the 2022 draft by the Baltimore Orioles. Everything that I just said about Paul Skeens can be said about Jackson Holiday, except Holiday tore up
core of the minor leagues for a full 2023 season. In 145 minor league games, he posted a 938 OPS while hitting 13 home runs and 35 doubles while also stealing 28 bases. I don't really care if it's unfair to put him above players like Royce Lewis and Spencer Torkelson on this list. I think he's going to be a superstar in the major leagues. To put up these numbers as a 19 year old is incredible. The Orioles should be stacked for years to come. At number 8, I have Dansby Swanson, the number 1 pick in the 2015 draft by the Arizona Diamondbacks. If you didn't know, Swanson was traded just 6 months after being selected first overall to the Atlanta Braves in exchange for Shelby Miller. I think it's pretty safe to say the Braves won this trade. In 7 seasons with the Braves, Swanson played 827 games while posting an OPS of 738 and hitting 102 home runs. He made an all-star team in 2022 and helped the Braves win a World Series in 2021. After the 2022 season, he became a free agent and signed a 7-year, $177 million contract with the Chicago Cubs. In year 1 with the Cubs, he posted a 744 OPS while hitting 22 home runs and 25 doubles in 147 games. He made the all-star team and won a gold glove this season. Swanson's had a pretty good career overall. He might not be a superstar, but he's super solid and had a good career for a number 1 pick. At number 7, I have Adley Rutschman, the number 1 pick of the 2017 draft by the Baltimore Orioles. In his first full minor league season in 2021, Rutschman posted an 899 OPS while hitting 23 home runs and 25 doubles in a 123 games. After having more success in early 22, he earned a call up to the Orioles in May. In his rookie season, he posted an 806 OPS while hitting 13 home runs and 35 doubles in 113 games. The Orioles went 63 and 50 in these games, an amazing turnaround from their miserable rebuilding years of recent. He was the runner up rookie of the year and was awesome defensively as well. In 2023, he posted an 810 OPS while hitting 20 home runs and 31 doubles in 154 games. He made his first All Star team this year and led the Orioles to the one seed in the American League. Rutschman is arguably the best catcher in baseball already, and I think he'll have a chance to go to the Hall of Fame one day. At number 6, I have Justin Upton, the number 1 pick of the 2005 draft by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Upton had an incredibly solid career, and was definitely one of the most consistent elite hitters in the early 2010s. He made his Major League debut in 2007 and spent 6 years with the D-backs before hopping around teams for the rest of his career. Overall, in 16 seasons, he posted an OPS of 812 by recording over 1,700 hits, 325 home runs, 350 doubles, and stealing 151 bases. He made 4 All-Star teams, won 3 Silver Slugger awards, and accumulated 32.3 B war during his time in the majors. He might not have ever been considered a superstar, but he had a very good career overall and was pretty damn good for a first overall pick. At number 5 I have Steven Strasburg, the number 1 pick of the 2009 draft by the Washington Nationals. If you're not familiar with Strasburg, he was arguably the best pitching prospect of all time heading into his draft year. He had an awesome major league career, but it was riddled by injuries at the beginning and end. He made his MLB debut in 2010 and it was one of the best debuts of all time. He threw 7 innings, allowing only 2 earned runs while walking 0 batters and striking out 14. His first big league season ended after 12 starts in which he underwent Tommy John surgery in late 2010 after tearing a ligament in his elbow. From 2012 to 2019, he was very healthy and was one of the best pitchers in all of baseball. During that stretch, he made 3 all-star teams, won a world series, and a world series MVP. In 8 career playoff starts, he had a 1.46 ERA and .94 whip. After the 2019 season, he re-signed with the Nationals on a 7 year $245 million contract. Since then, he's only made 8 starts after suffering injuries to his hand, neck, and ribs. In 247 career starts, Strasburg has a 3.24 ERA, 3.02 FIP, and 1.1 whip while striking out over 1,700 batters and accumulating 32.3 B war. If it weren't for all the injuries he had, he probably would have had a good chance to make the Hall of Fame. At number 4 I have Carlos Correa, the number 1 pick of the 2012 draft by the Houston Astros. Correa spent the first 7 years of his 9 year big league career with the Astros before signing with the Twins after the 2021 season. In his first big league season in 2015, he won the AL Rookie of the Year award and propelled the Astros to their first playoff appearance since 2005. In 2017, he helped the Astros win their first World Series although it comes with a cheating scandal controversy that I'm not going to get into today. In his 9 year big league career, he has an OPS of 820, over 1000 career hits, 173 home runs, and 215 doubles. He's made 2 all-star teams, won a rookie of the year award, a world series title, a gold glove, and has accumulated 40.9 B-War. He's only 29 years old, so the accolades will just keep tallying up. At number 3 I have David Price, the number 1 pick in the 2007 draft by the Tampa Bay Rays. Price had an awesome big league career and is one of the best pitchers in the 2010s. In 14 seasons across 5 teams, he started 311 games and pitched just over 2,000 innings. He posted a 3.32 ERA, 3.39 FIP, and 1.16 WHIP. He made 5 All-Star teams, finished 2nd in Cy Young voting twice, won the AL Cy Young Award in 2012, a World Series in 2018, and 2 ERA titles in 2012 and 2015. He pitched over 200 innings in 5 seasons and was a model of consistency during his prime. I don't think his resume is enough to get into the Hall of Fame, but he had a fantastic career and is one of the best number 1 picks in MLB history. At number 2 I have Garrett Cole, the number 1 pick of the 2011 draft by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Since Cole made his Major League debut in 2013, he's been the most consistent pitcher in all of baseball. He's made 300 starts in 11 seasons and has been elite in 8-9 to nine of them. 
In over 1,800 career innings, Cole has a 3.17 ERA and 1.09 whip while striking out over 2,100 batters. In 17 career playoff starts and 104 and a third postseason innings, he has a 2.93 ERA and 0.95 whip while striking out 134 batters. So far, he's made six all-star teams, finished top 10 in Cy Young voting seven times, won the AL Cy Young Award this season, two AL ERA titles in 2019 and 2023, and two MLB strikeout titles in 2019 and 2022. If he retired today, I think he'd have a good chance to make the Hall of Fame. Since he's only 33 and still has a lot left in the tank, he'll be in the Hall of Fame one day, no doubt. At number one, I have Bryce Harper, the number one pick of the 2010 draft by the Washington Nationals. Growing up, Harper was hyped up as one of the best prospects in baseball history. He was so good that he got his GED after two years in high school to play college baseball at the age of 17. In his sole year of college baseball, he had 31 home runs while posting a 1.5 OPS in 66 games. He made his MLB debut in 2012 at the age of 19 and won the Rookie of the Year award right away. In 12 major league seasons, he posted an OPS of 912 while hitting 306 home runs and 327 doubles. Not to mention, he has a 996 OPS in 49 playoff games, which is flat out unbelievable. He's made 7 All-Star teams, won 2 NL MVP awards, the 2022 NLCS MVP award, 3 Silver Slugger awards, and a Rookie of the Year award. He's still only 31 years old, which is pretty hard to believe. He's still got 8 Eight years left on his contract with the Phillies, so as long as he doesn't suffer any major injuries, he'll be in the Hall of Fame one day for sure. That's gonna do it for the video today. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was a lot of fun researching where all these players are now and where they've come from. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. Comment down below your thoughts on my rankings, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.